Greetings Hunters! It's no secret that I'm a big fan of dodging things, and my hope is to teach the art of dodging to as many hunters as I can. Saying this, I won't deny the fact that dodging and evading is not the easiest thing to learn, and hopefully this build that I'll be sharing will help anyone who's willing to improve on their dodging skills. The main idea behind this build is that you'll have good iframes, good survivability in case you miss your dodges, and at the same time, this build still packs a punch. To start this off, we'll need the Guild Palace Hunting Horn augmented with the Health and Affinity Augments. And whether you love it or hate it, we will need 3 pieces of the Teoster set for Master's Touch. However, this time we'll use the chest, arms, and waist. For the head and legs, we'll use the Gold Raytheon Helm and the Garuga Greaves respectively. Lastly, we'll use a level 4 Attack Charm. As usual, the first thing you'd want to do is maximize affinity with critical eye level 4 and weakness exploit at level 3. Let's maximize critical boost as well since we have enough slots to use. We won't be utilizing the dormant water element of the weapon so instead, we'll slot in a non-elemental boost jewel. Of course, no hunting horn build is worth its salt without 2 points in horn maestro. We'll add in another point in Vitality as well, just to get our health boost to level 3 for maximum survivability. Now, the next few decorations that we'll add are for the bare minimum for this build to work, assuming you don't have all the right level 4 slot decorations at hand. In a moment, I'll also give out a much more efficient version of the build if you do have the necessary decorations. You'll need at least 2 points of Evade Window slotted in and you'll need at least one point in Handicraft to reach purple sharpness. The foundation of this build at the very minimum should look like this. You should have 100% affinity when hitting tenderized weak spots, purple sharpness, decent raw power, and you should have good survivability. The two points in Evade Window will help you tremendously in dodging roars and in dodging through enemy attacks. Alright, so let's look at a much more efficient version of the build using better decorations. You can upgrade the two evasion jewels with two handicraft slash evasion jewels for more points in handicraft. You can remove the third point of handicraft to add in peak performance instead. The rest of the other slots can be filled in with divine blessing for even more survivability. Of course, in the beginning, we will expect to get hit from time to time. Therefore, having more health and being more tanky will benefit the hunter, since this is a practice build to get better at dodging. For the mantles, we'll first want to equip the glider mantle, simply for the great utility in slots and for its long duration of 180 seconds. Ideally, you'll want to slot in two peak performance slash evasion jewels in this. For the second mantle, you'll want to equip any of the elemental mantles except for the dragonproof mantle. They also have an uptime of 180 seconds. This means that by the time your elemental mantle expires, the glider mantle is ready for use again. Ideally, you'll want to slot in one peak performance jewel and one evade window jewel in this. The main idea here is that you'll want to constantly switch between the glider mantle and the elemental mantle every time the other one expires. If you do it just right, for the first 18 to 22 minutes of a hunt, you'll only have a maximum of 60 seconds where both of your mantles are unavailable for use. And by using the mantles, you'll have at least evade window 3 for the significant majority of a hunt. Now, if you feel more comfortable with the build and you don't find yourself getting hit as often, it is a good idea to remove the Divine Blessing points and exchange them with Attack Boost instead. Even without Divine Blessing, you will still have excellent survivability with Health Boost 3 and also with the addition of the Defense Up Large buff from your Hunting Horn. In a short while, I'll show you how this build fares against a very feisty Glavinus. But before I do that, I want to stress out the importance of having Evade Window 3 as a skill. Of course, the main advantage of having Evade Window 3 is that the timing of dodges become much more forgiving. But please take note that the Evade Window will only help if you time your roll slightly before the correct timing. In other words, Evade Window will not help you if you are late in your rolls.
More so, evade window will not help you if you are out of position, if you overcommit, or if you are too reckless. Personally, this is why I think the evade window skill and the evasion mantle by extension are not crutch mechanics as they don't promote bad habits. Dodging too soon is much more preferable than dodging too late. Dodging too soon simply means you've successfully identified the monster's move and you were able to react. Dodging too late means you were not focused. This is why I tend to avoid using the rock steady and temporal mantles because to an extent, they enable bad habits such as overcommitting and recklessness by not punishing the player for doing so. Evade window is an excellent quality of life skill, which will help you gain confidence and knowledge of the monster's attack timings. If you feel that your skills are improving, simply lessen the amount of evade window in your build or even remove these outright. Alright, so that's enough talking and let's actually see how much Evade Window can improve my hunt against Glavinus. <laughs> 